All right, welcome to the first video for Texel Hardware. Today, the first video will be about uh, replacing the hard drive in a laptop with an SSD. We have the Blast SSD here. It has a Fission Series 10 controller, and uh, it's got pretty much every every uh, basic specification that you need. As appropriate, we have the necessary tools for the job. We got the six-piece precision screwdriver set, and of course the drive and the computer it's going to go into. That's pretty much all that is needed. Just take this out. Interesting side note, this drive has for the 120 gigabyte model, which is here, has a 256 megabyte cache, RAM cache, and a max time before failure of 2 million hours of operation for the minimum time before failure, which is really good. Basically what this means is that uh, for every 2 million hours divided by 8 hours a day is 250,000 hours divided by a thousand drives in the sample is uh, a drive failure every 250 days out of a population of a thousand drives which is actually fairly reliable in a, as for the industry standard. Just set this stuff aside. And this machine it'll be going into is a very old Toshiba laptop. It's actually a satellite L755 model. And it is from early 2012, actually. Actually, I think it was produced in uh, late 2011. So it's, a, it's an old Sandy Bridge machine. Turned on there. Let me fix that. All right. As always, remove the back panels from the machine. You have to just check on the RAM modules, they are both seated properly still. And the Wi Fi card, CMOS battery. Just make sure the thing is seated properly. tray for screws to organize and this is the tired out old 5400 rpm drive remove it actually I need this bracket off of it it's all a very quick simple process
it's important to figure out the orientation of the drive precisely. And that looks like it's it. So you, that you know which way to mount your bracket. So once you've lined up the holes, no matter of seating the screws again. Number two. All right. And the hard drive's mounted back into the SATA bus and the brackets tied down, screwed in place. So now it should be all set to go. After replacing the back panels. be all set and with these laptops as long as you line up all of your tabs there'll be there'll be some little clips that need to snap into place you just firmly press those down and they'll finish seating just like this it's the only way to get them back down in there All right, and that was the installation in just a matter of a couple of minutes. We'll be back for the Windows installation shortly. All right, so now we're going to go to where I get the Windows 10 operating system. So we open our web browser and you can just go to google.com and type in download windows 10 and it's the top link right here windows 10 from microsoft this is the official download site and from here you can download um, either the iso which you can use with a virtual disk software such as gburner or burn it to a physical media DVD, or you can use the uh, media creation tool to create a bootable USB device, which you can install Windows off of, which is the method that I chose. Uh, before you begin, just make sure that you meet all of the minimum specifications listed here. The web address will be at the bottom of the screen as well, in case you just need to go direct to this website. Uh, if you meet the specifications, you can click the download tool now, and it downloads very quickly and easily. Just open it up, and it will guide you through all the steps that you need to create your uh, media with the media creation tool. As you can see, Norton shows that the file is safe. Getting a few things ready. Yeah, many hundreds of thousands of people in the Norton community have used this. You can scan it with any other softwares that you'd like. You have to accept the terms and conditions or it, won't, it like, will not let you use the media creation tool. And you have two options. You can either choose to upgrade this PC now, which will do all of the work local on the machine, or you can create a media, installation media, sorry, for another PC. So that's the option that we want to choose here. That way you can use the same media on this or multiple PCs if you need to. Um, 
Use recommended software options for this PC are already selected. However, if you're using it on a different machine, make sure you unselect that and customize any um, any things that you'd need to. You can choose a different language of Windows 10. You can choose between the standard installation, home single language, or the 10N. From what I understand, the N, the N version is for um, other countries outside the U.S. for licensing purposes. It has some different features, enabled or disabled. And your architecture, whether it's 32-bit, 64-bit, or, or if you want both on your installation media. And I assume if you choose both, it will let you choose which one you want to install when you do the installation. However, I've only chosen the 64-bit uh, version. You click Next and it asks if you want to create an ISO file, which is what you use to burn to a DVD for installation media. Or you can run that ISO direct on the machine with a software such as GBurner. Or you can choose the USB flash drive and it says it needs to be at least 3 gigabytes in size for available space. What you do is you would click next and right now I don't have one uh, collected that connected sorry that it will work with however it will pop up with a dialog box that lets you choose your device and then it forces you to do a reformat it will reformat it to the NTFS file system and then it will put the entire operating system on the drive so that when you have it in a computer without an OS, it will boot from the USB device and you can follow all the directions. They're pretty self-explanatory and we'll be going through those uh, later on. So we'll meet you back when we are ready for the uh, USB OS installation of Windows 10. Alright, so now this is uh, day two of the SSD upgrade that we started yesterday. I uh, haven't had time to get around to the other part until now, but uh, should be should be pretty smooth sailing from here on forward. First of all, I need to supply power to the laptop. Alright, so now we've got a power light and we're plugged in. Now what I've done here is I put the entire Microsoft 10, Windows 10 OS from the um, recovery media creator tool that's available on the Microsoft website. Use that to create a bootable disk which we will load the whole thing off of here. So place that in the, in the USB port. and we boot the system on. Hopefully you guys have a good enough view of, of what I'm doing here. And since I cannot directly screen capture a system that doesn't have an OS on it, this is probably one of the best things that I can do. I'm sorry about the glare off of the, the window next to me. All right, and then here we have the Windows OS installation walkthrough wizard. We'll just stick with default options, install now. For that page. By the way, do not stick with default options. Uh, when it gets into the, the system page options. So those are full of a lot of spyware that I'm sure a lot of people have heard about. This is where you enter your uh, license key. Alright, so now that we've entered the license key, you get to the terms and conditions, which you must accept or else you cannot use the software. You can choose either upgrade or custom install. I would choose custom install since this is a fresh installation. There's no nothing to upgrade upon. So we select that. Select from drive zero and allocated space 111.8 gigabytes. Select next. And 
and now it says it's ready to copy files getting them ready and uh, finishing up all of the installation come back with the next segment of recording here when the next thing is ready to go all right so now we've finished the automatic installation it just went through its own paces on the setup wizard there was nothing I had to click or anything getting devices ready in the last few system items I think now all we're waiting for is the display adapter okay so you select your wireless network in your password now this is where you need to slow down slow down this get going fast will get you in trouble really fast because if you want to protect your privacy you have to select customize setting in the far bottom corner <clears throat> And if you want the traditional level of, of privacy features, you have to select all of these things to off. And then you go back to the standard privacy level that you had with Windows 7, Windows XP, and, and even further back. then you can you can sign in with the Microsoft account or you can select skip this step in the bottom corner it allows you to create a local account just like you could with uh, with other versions of Windows prior Once you've set up your account, and anything private was already buttoned out with little bubbles, the computer starts talking to you. It says, Hi, we're happy you're here. <laughs> Lots of great features to get excited about. Let's start. And there you have the desktop. Everything has been set up successfully. Alright guys, well I hope you really enjoyed my very first YouTube video about upgrading the drive from a 5400 RPM uh, spinning hard disk drive to a solid state 550 megabytes per second drive. Uh, hopefully I'll uh, learn a lot from this one and move forward with the others. And uh, as always, until next time.